All right, guys, today I'm going to be doing a changing the differential fluid on a 2019 Chevy Colorado pickup truck. Um, the customer said that they was getting some wine in, uh, coming from the vehicle. They thought it was the transmission, but I checked it out and the wine seemed to be coming from the rear end. And I asked them how they ever got the differential fluid changed. Uh, since they bought it and they said no, they only had, um, the oil changed a few times and the vehicle got 83,000 miles on it. So we gonna, um, take that fluid out of there and see what's going on back there. And hopefully that solves the problem. And, uh, hopefully they didn't wait too late because I, I test drove it and it was, it was, uh, it was winding pretty bad. You can actually hear it in the vehicle with the um with the windows up. So we gonna um I'm gonna go get this uh jack and the jack stands and then we're gonna pop it up and see what's going on with it. Alright guys, stay tuned. Alright guys. I got the jack and the jack stands out, but before I take the uh jack it up. We gotta remove that spare tire right there. And to do that on these vehicles, uh, to the right of the license plate, you wanna take this down. And it's like a, um, they should have a pole in the back of the, uh, behind the driver's seat. I mean, behind the uh, back seat that um, let that tire down. Let me check. All right, guys, <clears throat> the spare tire is up under here, but I should have asked the customer before he left. I don't like going through people's stuff. You know, he got a lot of stuff back there on the back seat. I should have told him before he um, before he left that I'm going to have to take the spare down. So, you know, I could call him, but still, I'd rather for the customer to be here. That way, you know, we got a full understanding on, on what's going on because I don't want nobody rifling through my stuff. So what we're going to try to do is it's not a big deal. What I need to get to is right there. I'm just going to jack it up and hopefully that I don't have to take the spare tire down. I'm just going to try to work around it and we're just going to do it like that. So, yeah, let's do that. All right, guys, it's real simple. This is the rear of the vehicle, the rear differential. I got the vehicles jacked up. As you see, I got it on jack stands and I just left the jack up under there for extra precaution so the vehicle don't fall. Well, in case it fall, this right here is the uh, field plug and up under the bottom is the, uh, right here, is the drain plug. So what I usually do is before I take that drain plug out. I want to make sure the field plug come out first because I'm pretty sure everybody know that if you take that uh, drain plug out, drain all the fluid, and then the field plug is stuck, now all your fluid at your car and you can't, you're not able to put it back in because a lot of people have problems, especially on older vehicles. Luckily, this is a two, 2019 and it's not that bad. But a lot of older vehicles, you know, it be rusted, shut, then you got, you know, I done seen people drain the fluid out of it and then wasn't able to put it back in because the field boat stuck. So what I usually do is make sure I get you as a 3A ratchet with an extension. Stick that in there. Okay. And I'm not going to take this all the way out because now that I know that it's loose, I can go ahead and loosen up the bottom uh, plug to, to drain the fluid out. So let me let me get to that. All right, guys. Before I drain this fluid out, another thing I meant to tell y'all: if like on a lot of time people drain their fluid, they take all those bolts out right there, clean it out, replace the gasket. But on this vehicle, I won't need to because it's a 2019, and I don't. A lot of time, I don't even do it on older vehicles because if it if it's not leaking. I don't see a problem that you have to change it. As long as it's not leaking around the seals, I would just drain it and, and, and fill it back up. So 
No. And I would have to take the spare tire down to do that, to get to, to get to all the boats to do it the right way. But luckily I'm just draining it. So, any hoot. That's the bottom. Take this one loose. Up. See, that's why I like working on uh, newer vehicles because it's it's the boats is free up. You no, know, being from the Midwest, everybody know like driving your vehicles all that salt if it eat it up. Man, it's hard to get those boats off when that salt get to it. But lucky, this is a newer vehicle. That's why I like working on newer vehicles as opposed to older vehicles. All right. You know, I should be wearing gloves, but my gloves is in the house, and I I got to get this vehicle done, because I told them to give me like an hour, and I've been playing around most of the time, so let me, let me take this out. Ah, you see it? Let's see. Now you see that, guys? That's why it's making all that noise. You see all those thick metal shavings right there? That's kind of more than what it need to be. You know, and hopefully it stop making that noise and hopefully it's not too late and the noise don't get worse. But like I told them, we need to change it to see because what's going to happen is going to happen. You know, ain't no way around it. If it's damaged, the damage is already done. But this stuff stinks too. So let me go get a towel so I can wipe this stuff off my hand. Then I come back and take that uh, the field plug out. All right, guys, let that drain for a second. All right, I'll be right back. All right, again, let's take this uh, field plug out. Now this one doesn't have a magnet on the bottom of that, so when you put those field plugs in, make sure you put this one back on the top, and you'll know the bottom, because the bottom one got a uh, magnet on the bottom. I got to clean all the metal shavings off of there that collect all the metal deposits from the inside, and that's important that that one go on the bottom. So let me let this still drip, and let me let most of that stuff drip out of there. So then I'm gonna clean that off before I put that uh the, the plug back in there. So let's get to it. All right, guys. Now that you seen the the bottom of this one, see how I got the magnet on it that collect the metal metal residue, and this the top one that don't have the magnet because it don't need it. So I'm gonna get ready to put this uh the bottom one back. All right, guys. This uh, vehicle called for uh, 75 W90 full synthetic. So that's what I had to get from that one. Um, and this is the pump that you put on the bottle. It used the pump, you used to put it to pump it in there. You know, but I believe if that spare tire wasn't in there, I'd probably be able to, you know, turn the bottle upside down and put it in there. But let me get this stuff open so I can go ahead and get this done. All right, guys, I might be able to get it in there without using that pump because trust me, that pump takes forever to use. This way is sometimes a little bit messy. It all depends. But in a way that know that if it's um, full or not, we're going to fill it up till it starts running out. And then that's how we know that it's, it's, it's full. So let me go ahead. Get that up in there. And we gonna squeeze. See that works out perfect. Gotta work smart guys, not hard. Alright, let me go ahead and put this down so I can squeeze all of this stuff up in there. So I can go ahead and get this done. And like I said, it normally take it said 1.67 quarts. Normally take two quarts, so I'll depend on if you get all the fluid out of there or not, but I got two quarts, just in case. So let me go ahead and um, do this, and then I'll turn it back on. 
and that's guys that's how you know if she full I mean how, how you know if it's full or not and when it start running out like that alright guys what you doing put it back in there tighten it up and remember the one with the uh, the magnet on it go at the bottom the one that go at the top and when you tighten it up like I said I just I just hand tighten it with the red I know you post the um, tighten it with the um, the torque wrench which I believe is 24 or 25 PSI if I'm not mistaken you can look it up for your vehicle but I just hand tighten it with the what's the name the, um, the ratchet that's the way I always do it do it I, I don't really like using a torque wrench I mean I will if I have to but you know I really haven't had no problem not using it I don't over tighten it so um, yeah but if you if you want to do it the right way just use your torque wrench to tighten it up you know um, but everything good to go I, um, I put some um, the thread and tape on there to make sure you don't um, it don't leak out you know I had put it back I put it back in there before on some vehicles without the thing and I haven't had no leaks but if you want you could put some um, some thread and tape around there so it, it doesn't leak out you know and you shouldn't have no problem but let me get this out the jack stands so I'm gonna uh, take it for a test drive and let the oil, the, um, the fluid heat up and then see what we got see if we still getting that noise and then if not that'll be a wrap so let's get ready and see what we got let me try to clean up a little bit for let me I'm, I'm gonna take the jack and stuff down throw this uh, the stuff away and it didn't take the actually didn't take the whole two quarts it's like maybe one and point six seven or something like that so almost two bottles so I got a little bit left over not gonna really use it for anything but I just sit it aside from one of my other vehicles in case I run low or something maybe but yeah just about done here and that's how you change the differential fluid on a 2019 uh, Chevy Colorado uh, rear wheel drive it's not the 4x4 alright alright guys so that solved the problem it ain't making um, no noise no more no wind noise so that's how you change the differential fluid on a 2019 Chevy Colorado alright guys later and be safe out there. I'm out. Perfect. Perfect. Perfect.